afternoon, everyone, from Fanning the Flame in Jerusalem. Oh, well, as you know, I love to share what God puts on my heart. I feel that it's so important for us to be faithful and to release our voices in this world. We are called to come alongside one another and fan the flame of the Holy Spirit that lives and breathes and has his being within us in the name of Yeshua, God's salvation. Hallelujah. You know, my heart breaks because we can know the Lord, be walking with him for so many years and not be on the healing path. And I keep talking about this because it's really heartbreaking. There are so many believers that love God but remain broken. We're all broken. And God loves us just as we are. But he does want to heal our hearts. Hear me. He does want to heal our hearts. And if we want to be formed into the image of his son, then we need to receive his love experientially in our hearts and accept his love whereby we can accept ourselves exactly where we are. And for me, that's when anxiety leaves. And as I've been saying, I am fertile ground for massive healing. Oh, yes. Being the authentic you and the authentic me is so very important to God. You know, we're called to honor God with our lives. And if we're not willing to get on a healing path, we'll never really do that. We can't hide anything from God. And I was sharing with a dear friend the other evening, I think some of us, I think we all have, we hide behind God instead of hiding in God. In other words, God becomes, not intentionally, you know, we don't do any of this consciously, God becomes our escape, and I don't mean that in a positive way. So we get on the Yeshua train, and we run up and down and sideways, and we burn out for him, and that doesn't bring him any glory. God cares about our hearts before any ministry we could ever do. And of course, he is our main top priority, worshiping God, nurturing and fostering this relationship with God, this intimacy with God is my number one ministry. That always makes me think of Matthew six thirty three: Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all things shall be added to you. And so when we are positioned with a transparent posture before God, we take the mask off. You know, God knows everything, but he wants us to talk to him. He wants us to tell him the truth about what's going on within us. And then we're positioned, truly, we're ripe for healing because we want him to heal. We need to want to be healed, absolutely. And so what stands out to me is the scripture I was reading just yesterday about the accounts of healing in the scripture. Yeshua asked the, the person, do you want to be healed? That's a profound question. And we all need to ask ourselves that. Do I want to be healed? Because some of us may not want to for whatever reason. Yeah, we really need to check our hearts. There's so much fakeness and masks in this world. I'm not interested. I'm fighting for my life, so to speak. I'm fighting for my authenticity. And, and once I have it, I won't give it up. I won't give it up even if it means ending relationships because God wants us in authentic relationships where our hearts can be heard and received and loved. I want to feel wholly loved and wholly received and wholly respected. Holy, not H-O-L-Y, although that would be nice. W-H-O-L-L-Y, holy, fully loved and respected. And God knows the end from the beginning. We cannot change anybody, nor should we want to. We are responsible to take care of who we've been called to steward, which is this life that I've been called to steward by God. As much as I'm his responsibility and his delight, 
what I do with this life that he has gifted me with is my responsibility to him. I need to steward my life well. I need to make healthy choices. I wanted to talk about something that's been on my heart, false guilt. You know, there is real guilt if our conscience condemns us. You know, we need to straighten that out with God. We need to do what we need to do with God. But there's false guilt, and many of us have suffered with that. And, you know, self-talk, it's very important to get control of your brain, get control of your thoughts. Self-control is a virtue. Let's be more virtuous today. Self-control, we think of as an action to go, to do, our behavior, our thoughts. We need to control our thoughts so we don't go down a rabbit trail. It's just this gerbil wheel goes around and around and around. The only way out is to choose with our minds, with our adult mind, to step out of that vicious cycle. Oh, yes. I wanted to share another thing. I'll get back to that. But I want to share another thing I was thinking about this morning. Oh, you know, I've been talking a lot about how I have left. I have exited the devil culture. And I think about how many years I feel like I lost on the surface. I feel like I lost years because my focus was on the devil. The devil. The devil, the devil this, the devil that, blah, 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 blah. Do you know what? That has sucked the living daylights out of me. I am not there now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take him right out of your vocabulary. Put him right out of the room. So what? The devil's real. We know that. So what? God is greater. I won't give him the glory anymore. And you know, we don't realize when I say give him the glory, when... When we keep talking about the devil, we're ensnared to the devil, and we will be in a prison. We'll be in, ensnared, totally derailed by the devil, and that's what he wants. He's real. So what? My God is greater. And I remind both of us here, myself and those who may be listening and watching, the scripture says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy that's a total derailment no 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 and no i'm not called to that i'm called to worship god i'm called to worship god and it's it's a habit it's a habit that people need to get out of it takes time to get out of it but correct yourself oh no put him out you know so i was thinking about it and i thought wow i've been robbed i feel like i've been robbed these years of being ensnared but you know and the evangelical church oh my goodness it's all about the devil yes it's about yeshua but oh my god every other sentence and that's how you're ensnared and you can even be afraid you don't need to be afraid of the devil when you're tucked into the bosom and the heart of god you don't need to be so what so what? He's real. So what? My God is greater. I'm holding on to God and I'm going higher and higher with Yeshua. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. I've been set free. We need to step out of the devil culture. Thank you, Father. Because when we're blaming our adversary, blame shifting, we don't grow. It stunts our growth. It cripples our growth. That's, that's the harm. The church at large who's so fixated on the devil, they're stunting their own growth. It's crippling the church because nobody's taking responsibility for their issues. We're broken people and we have issues, all kinds of issues. And when are we going to take responsibility for our issues? When we stop blaming the adversary kick him out of the room yes it's true there's an expression the enemy of your soul because the flesh if the flesh is not redeemed meaning i haven't received yeshua then the only thing i can do is live a life of sin because my spirit is dead i have no holy spirit awareness i have no holy spirit living within me but once i call upon the name of yeshua and i have received my sin covering the atonement yeshua is our forgiveness now the flesh lives in submission to the spirit of Yeshua. Oh, yeah. And just one more thing about the devil. He's God's devil. God uses the devil for his purposes. Oh, yeah. So in order to grow 
and be formed and conformed into the image of Messiah, you need to take responsibility for your life. And you cannot do that when you keep blame shifting. So that's a huge breakthrough. Hallelujah. I mean, I've been on a healing path for a long time. The healing keeps coming. And for those of you who might be popping in for the first time, a month ago I hit a wall and I ran out of juice. And that was divine intervention. And that was from long, long overdue. I had not been taking my retreats because of the war, because um, the places where I would go on retreat were closed. So um, I'm in a city which is full of intensity, living in a war, pouring out for 15 years in a ministry, which is a great blessing, but pouring out my personal relationships, not realizing that I was not making space for myself to receive in my friendships. And of course, looking at all those reasons for that. So I've been doing a lot of work with the Lord. And the major thing is that I have come to a place of accepting myself where I am you know, uncomfortable and feeling these, uh, what are these feelings? I'm not used to this. I'm at a place I'm not used to. I'm a giver. What's going on? Accepting myself where I am has, has chased out the anxiety and caused me to be fertile for massive healing, fertile ground for massive healing. And that is a reason to rejoice. Hallelujah. And so during the Chagim, the Feast of the Lord, it was hard to stay at home, although my set, my dance center is also my home. So I worshiped from here and I, I worshiped on my channel, which is the headquarters. That's the word the Lord has given me. And I was replenishing for my concerts that I've done in city center just before Sukkot and during Sukkot. And so I made all the right choices with that. And um, getting my energy back. And it was a mixture of many things. But I also want to share about this. If you are in oppressive relationships, if you are not able to be your authentic self, you need to reevaluate. So either your relationships change or you have to move on. Because God saved us. We are one of a kind. Try to just wrap your head around this. There is a special place in God's heart for me and for you and every creature that he made. There is a special place that is carved out in his heart for each one of us, which means he needs to hear my heart. He needs to see my dance worship. He needs to hear authentic me. He loves me. He created me for him. He is my first ministry. And he's a relational God, so he created me for relationships. I'm human intentionally. He wanted me to be human with his spirit so I could affect change and for all the other reasons that he chose to make me a human. So I need human relationships whereby I'm not only giving, but I am receiving. And I'm speaking to you, child of God, because many of us, are givers and we but we're only givers and we've denied our human needs it's got to stop and i pray that this is a blessing to you because many of us pour out and pour out and i love to give you know when i'm pouring out in these concerts or i'm pouring out i'm just giving in ministry i, I want to help build people up in messiah yeshua it's like when i'm pouring out in ministry as I'm sowing into the heavens, so to speak, the heavens are sowing back into me, so I'm, I'm energized. It's wonderful. But in personal relationships, we have to make space. And if we're not being heard, and if our hearts are not being loved and accepted, for whatever reasons, we have to reevaluate. Because God has drawn the line, and he said, to, for me, no more. No more. I can't be in relationships where I'm not receiving. I don't need to apologize for sharing my heart. Are you kidding me? I think what happened was I have been pouring out in this land for so long, and it is my ministry. I am a, a, a passionate lover. I am a giver. I have a gift of love. The Lord has told me that. I have a gift of joy. I have a gift of giving and nurturing. So I am completely in my call. But in personal relationships, you've got to get your needs met. Of course, we get our needs met by God, but he uses, hear me, 
He uses humans to meet our needs. Now, I'm not saying those relationships are easy to come by, not at all. But we need to pray them in. If we don't have at least one person, if we have more than that, great. But if we don't have at least one person that we can share with, that will hear us, that we can give to and they give to us, we need to be fully loved and fully received. If you're in relationships where you can only talk about God and there's no conflict, there's no conflict, that's baloney. Absolutely. Do you know the relationships that I have that I so treasure are relationships that we've gone toe to toe? Oh yeah. If you think, I just want to help you understand, if you think that you can be in an emotionally deep, meaningful, intimate, emotional relationship with someone, but never have conflict, and never have to do the tough stuff, you're deluding yourself, friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, take marriage, the, the final frontier, right, where your, your partner reflects your insides. Some people run away because it's just too painful. I use this description I, um, of a man I was involved in with many, many years ago. And he pretty much raised himself from like 15 years old. And he learned how to do life. And when we got into a relationship, I think he was so afraid to look within. And I can respect this and understand this. Some people, if they don't have God, even if you do have God, it's still very scary. You're afraid that if you do open up, you might unravel and you won't be able to put yourself back together again. And that's a real concern for people, especially who don't have the Lord. Because I didn't even start dealing with the reality of my heart. I was living on automatic pilot until I got saved at age 29. Oh yeah, and then I began the healing journey. Yeshua, God's salvation, is the beginning of the healing journey. So, you know, we, our souls are saved at salvation, but then we have to say, God, I need you to heal my broken and devastated heart. This is the reality. We're in a broken and fallen world. Oh, yeah. Let's let God help us pick up the pieces of our hearts. You know, if you want to live on automatic pilot for the rest of your life, that's your choice. But I tell you this, you will not be able to have not even one successful emotionally intimate relationship with any human being if you remain broken and God chooses to use humans even just one person that we can trust because God heals our hearts as we step out and trust another human being with discernment you say God is this the person that you have for me to talk to is this the person? You know, just recently, I was considering speaking to someone in my life, and it was a new person. And, you know, of course, I go into, oh my God, I don't know this person, I'm not going to open up, blah, blah, blah. and you know what? Uh, somebody close in my life said, well, think about it, maybe try it. And you know what? From the moment that I began to share with this person, there's never been, oh my God, there's never, it's been total green light the whole way. We have to be able to trust at least another human being in order to receive healing in our hearts. If we don't trust even one other human being, we're not going to get healed. How could I say that? I really believe that because God uses humans because we are human. And that's one of the reasons, a big reason Yeshua came in the form of a human. He was here with God from the beginning. He is spirit. But God sent him into the world in the form of a babe to grow up. And ultimately, as the suffering servant, he gave up his life. He will come again as the conquering king and collect his bride. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that is our hope. But the picture of a man in human form going to his execution stake, his tree of sacrifice to be our ultimate forgiveness, 
man for man. He was 100% man and 100% God, but he didn't have sin, which is what made him the perfect, spotless, pure, unblemished Lamb of God who continually takes away the sin of the world because as we say yes to him, his sacrifice continues. But if we give up our last breath and we pass from this world, it's too late to call upon his name. And the thing is, we don't know the number of our days. Only God does. So it's very important to receive Yeshua. He is our forgiveness, our once and for all final atonement. Yochanan, the Jew, John, the Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever would put his faith in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. That is the Gospel. And I heard a preacher some time ago, I was there in person, and I heard the preacher share the Gospel plus. Something like, when you receive the Lord, you received the community around you. And I thought, eh, that's not the gospel. The gospel is what I just said, John 3.16. Yes, community is important. Fellowship, accountability, all of that's important. But the gospel is not for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him put their faith in him shall never perish and have everlasting life. But they need to be in their local community. That, that's not the gospel. Yes, it's good for us to be in fellowship and be in community, yes. So let's be careful what we're preaching, especially from the pulpit. You know, it's one thing if I'm talking to you and we're talking about whatever we're talking about. But if I'm up at a pulpit and I am preaching to a congregation, I need to be sure what I'm sharing is gospel. There's no plus the gospel and it says in the book of revelation yeshua says if anyone adds or takes away from these words of mine it's not going to be a good end for you or for me no we are not to add anything to the gospel of yeshua the messiah hallelujah god's salvation the anointed one so false guilt just wanted to get back to that we really need to talk to ourselves because for many of us, I spoke yesterday, because we're in a fallen world and there's no perfect parents, there's no one perfect but God. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the scripture says. Most of us have suffered from codependency, which is an unhealthy dependency to some measure on others, or we may have the opposite reaction to our trauma, which is I don't need anybody. I'm an island unto myself. Of course, we know both of those extremes are not good. And so when we get on the healing train and we become healthy, and the way we do that is by making one healthy decision at a time. This is what I have found in my experience. 